One Zambia, One Nation. Thank you for joining us for the news news with me, Sarah Miti. Top stories in the news. CEEC hands over 140 vehicles to transport sector. Zambia scores positives in nuclear science in health sector. Voluntary services overseas empowers 50 Zambia youths. Plus, Choma DC calls for more sports academies. Zenith News in detail. The Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission, CEEC, has handed over 140 vehicles valued at about 40 million kwacha to Zambians in the transport industry. President Haka Indehichilema has explained that this is part of government's initiative to empower diverse entrepreneurs in an effort to alleviate poverty as well as high unemployment levels. Wope Sendwe now reports. It was a joyful moment at the agriculture showgrounds in Lusaka when the government handed over 140 vehicles to entrepreneurs in the transport business. President Hakainde Hichilema said the government recognizes the challenges that Zambians, especially women and youths, face to access finances for business. In a speech read on his behalf by Minister of Youth, Sport and Arts, Elvis Sinkanda, President Hichilema said the government is creating opportunities for citizens to participate in the country's economic transformation, such as this one. I also want to reiterate that indeed we need to be excited as government that today 140 vehicles covering 10 provinces are going to be given, representing 58 taxis as indicated by the, the, the DG for its CEC. 53 buses, we are able to see uh, buses there. 29 trucks, ranging from three to five tons. The news report is lack of finances, access to finances. So the CEC is now speaking and also answering to that challenge. Acting Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises Development, Mdolo Piri, said the government is elated with the number of young people taking up the initiative to start businesses. The ministry has deliberately made a special focus to provide finance to youths who want to venture into transport subsector, which is dominated by large business houses. Guest of honor, from 2022 to date, through CEC, the ministry has supported 82,327 businesses countrywide contributing 845 million into the economy. Meanwhile, Citizen Economic Empowerment Commission Director General explains the terms of the loans while urging the recipients to ensure they pay back in order for others to benefit. The absolute owner is CEEC until they are fully paid for by yourselves. And until then, they are a property of CEEC that must be maintained and kept appropriate according to the requirements of motor vehicle maintenance, failure to which you may lose the vehicle, we may repossess the vehicle. So remember these two things, the loans and secondly, the vehicles, the absolute owner is CEEC. You can drive a Rosa which is a six front. So you can also do it as youths, as women, as ladies, we can do it. The empowerment falls under the CEEC initiative on a taxi, minibus, or a five-ton light truck loan. Wuppersen reporting in Lusaka. The Chinese government, in partnership with the World Food Program, is set to drill two boreholes that will benefit about 200 residents of Manungu Ward of Monze District in response to the drought that has hit the area. Speaking during the groundbreaking ceremony, Chinese embassy charged the affairs, Wang Sheng, who also donated millimol to residents, said the gesture is in response to President Haka in the Hichilema's declaration of drought as a national disaster and call for international humanitarian assistance. Here's a report. These residents of Manunguad in Monze district have a reason to express their joy through dance following the move by the Chinese government to drill boreholes for domestic use and irrigation. Chinese embassy charged the affairs. Wang Sheng says the gesture was an initial humanitarian response to the drought crisis experienced in the country. Hopefully these boreholes to be drilled 
will enable the local communities to have better access to clean water and sanitation in the short run and in the long run, help enhance local water harvesting mechanisms to allow for more efficient irrigation essential for sustainable agricultural production. The project is expected to be complete by this April and will benefit around 200 local people. Let me assure you that this is only the first preliminary step taken by the Chinese side. We are ready to help more within our capacity and more resources will be mobilized with possible large-scale emergency food assistance in coordination. Southern Province Minister Credo Nanjua says the gesture by the Chinese government was a timely response to the declaration of the drought as a national disaster. I wish to express my gratitude to the Embassy of the People's Republic of China and the World Food Programme for the kind gesture to three boreholes at Mambo Village here in Monza District. This groundbreaking today of the drilling of boreholes indeed is as timely is a timely response to His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zambia. Mr. Akainde Hishilema's declaration of a national disaster and emergency. The Tango Nagumisha Umule Riveso Akainde Hilema, the Guyago Romona, even to Baruleme, and we very much in the Mumili Mayabo, once and Joko Naja Radi, Yoga Gavoti, Atumurumba, Emule Riveso. At the same event, the Chinese government, through its embassy, donated 400 by 25 kilograms bags of mirimiu worth 130,000 kwacha to residents of Manunguat. Frederick Macha for Zanis News in Monza District, Southern Province. Meanwhile, a combined team of non-governmental organizations joined country program Adventist Development Relief Agency and Zambia Land Alliance are on ground in Gwembe District, Southern Province, to check on the food security in the district. Joint Program GSCP Senior Programs Officer Kingsley Jello say there is need for concerted efforts to address the drought situation in the district. <music> Minister of Technology and Science Felix Mutati says Zambia has made firm progress in the use of technologies and application of nuclear science in the health sector. Mr. Mutati has disclosed that the government has invested over 25 million United States dollars in the construction of a nuclear and cancer center in Dola to reduce on cancer-related deaths. Mr. Mutati said this at a joint press briefing and issuance of statutory instrument, SI, on regulation on nuclear medicine and radiotherapy with the Ministry of Health and the Radiation Protection Authority, IPA. And Minister, Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary for Donor Coordination, George Sinyangwe, has called for higher standards of safety and protection when using ionizing, ionizing radiation. Dr. Sinyangwe said modern medicines has brought with it advancements, particularly in the field of nuclear medicine and radiotherapy. Meanwhile, Radiation Protection Board Chairperson Christabel Reinke thanked the government for its support in ensuring the high standards of radiation safety and protection in the country's health system. We are also asking RPA and the Ministry of Health that when it comes to the technology to be applied for nuclear medicine, when it comes to the equipment that must be procured for nuclear medicine, they have to ensure, first of all, compliance to the SI we're sending today to ensure that we deliver appropriate outcomes for our people. So the issue of technology and equipment is key. Number three, we have invested as government 25 million US dollars to construct a, a new nuclear and cancer center in Indola. Improper application of radioactive and nuclear materials can cause biological effects which may result in various diseases such as cataracts of the eye, 
radiation bands, leukemia, and other radiation-induced carcinomas. Today is a testament to the collaborative effort to address the complex challenges in ensuring that our public workers, our public health workers, private health workers, the environment, our people are protected from harmful effects of ionizing radiation. I believe by working together, we can ensure that our regulatory frameworks are robust, they are responsive and reflective of the latest advancements in technology. The Disaster Risk Management Workshop has opened in Siavonga with a call to journalists to report accurately when covering disaster-related stories. Speaking at the official opening of the two days workshop, African Risk Capacity East and Southern Africa Country Engagement Manager Hussein Madi said journalists play a critical role in dissemination of information in an event of a disaster, hence the call for them to be factual. Mr. Madi said the public relies on the information transmitted by journalists when a, when a disaster occurs, adding that journalists must strive to report truthfully. We have more in the following report. The two days media workshop on disaster risk management has opened in Siavunga district. The workshop has attracted journalists drawn from different media houses across the country. The workshop, which aims to equip journalists with information on disaster risk management, has been organized by the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit in partnership with the African Risk Capacity. We are there, we are covering the impact of the disaster. So we really want uh, you to be well informed and be able to accurately uh, communicate uh, about where people are affected, where lives and livelihoods are lost. So it's really, really important uh, that you are all here. And the media trainers commended DMMU and African Risk Capacity for initiating the workshop, adding that it will enable journalists to acquaint themselves with the terms associated with disaster risk management. This training will equip journalists, first of all, to have an understanding of what a disaster is, first of all. Because what I've seen as a media trainer is that we journalists should understand these terminologies. What is a disaster? And uh, at what stage are we at in terms of disaster? Okay, because there's a pre-disaster stage, during disaster stage, after disaster stage. Now, here in, in our case here in Zambia, we are at during disaster stage. It is anticipated that from the two days media training, the capacity for journalists to cover disasters will be enhanced. For Zanis, I'm Lakson Makodza. Thank you, Lakson, for that report. Now, local government and rural development minister Gary Kombo has called on local authorities to come up with a more reliable rating and collection system for the valuation and collection of property tax by the councils. Mr. Nkombo said the high rates of default by the citizens is an indication that the system has some gaps which have made the process subjective and ineffective. The minister who was speaking when he officiated at the training of local councils on taxation, on taxation and revenue in Chongwe added that the legislation governing the rating system and collection of revenue need to be revised in order for it to be relevant to the current dynamics. Mr. Nkombo says the zonal rating system can no longer apply to Zambia because certain housing units have been developed and gained value after purchase, especially in sub-urban sub areas. And why I think it's defective is because of the rate of default. Some may argue that uh, it is the economy that causes people to default. Others will argue that um, the indices that the valuers use sometimes are wrong. In certain jurisdictions, they make it deliberate. Whilst there's an existing of the, the platform or facility for remission, when the property owner cries foul and says, look, I do not agree with your valuation. The remission still remains a prerogative. The prerogative of those who are in control at any given time to say yes, we will give you such a center of reduction towards remission. So anything that is associated with prerogative decision by human being like myself will forever remain effective. And so it is important that we're having this engagement on how we can enhance the capacity of the local authorities
to be autonomous financially and otherwise to build up a system that will generally be accepted by most stakeholders as a long-lasting way to collect revenue. The revenue streams are many, sometimes countless, but for now I think the focus is on the property tax. Minister of Finance and National Planning, Setumbeko Musokotwane, says delays at entry points have potential to hinder trade as well as economic development of the country. Dr. Musokotwane observed that inefficiencies and lack of proper management of border areas has resulted in slow clearance of trucks, among other goods, which in turn affect the revenue collection. Speaking during the town hall meeting on unlocking Zambia's economic potential through enhanced imports, export and border process efficiencies in Osaka, Dr. Musokotwane called for the removal of bottlenecks at border posts in order to accelerate trade. He promised to adhere to the concerns which were raised by various stakeholders that are involved in cross-border trading that the government will address the issues, especially delays on the Zambian side that hinder progress. The minister also announced that the next town hall meeting will be held in June to continue deliberating on economic-based practices that are aimed at unlocking the economy. And Minister of Infrastructure and Urban Development, Charles Milupi, said his ministry is committed to upgrading infrastructure such as roads, expansion of parking spaces, among others, at border posts to enhance efficiency and effective trade. The imports that come into this country, whether they be petroleum, foodstuffs, machinery, they also pass through the border areas. It follows, therefore, that if our management of the border areas is not up to standards, it means that transactions will be adversely affected. And so far, given the complaints that we've been hearing over the years, this is not a one-off thing like today, but it's a culmination of what has been happening over the years we have not really done that well because even visually, as I said at the beginning of this, you come through Botswana, come through Namibia, you are quickly processed on the other side, you pass through to the Zambian side, a process that may have taken 30, 40 minutes on the other side, on the Zambian side it can take two, three hours sometimes days. So these are the issues that we need to address. So very quickly I'll go through uh, the borders and explain what we are doing at each border. At each border. I'll start with Nakonde and I'll go anti-clockwise. Uh, Nakonde, as you know, we had issues with the Great North Road. Most of that has been done from Chinsari all the way to Nakonde. And, uh, I think a week or so, we will head off the $270 million from the World Bank that we shall use to do the Pika uh, Serenge Road. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that is to improve uh, the Nakonde border post, mm -hmm. including at all borders, providing adequate parking for trucks. Uh, the next border, really, uh, is what we are going to develop through a PPP that is in Wapula province, uh, that is Mwenda Kasomeno. Again, it's not just the roads that we are doing, it is also developing one-stop border posts at those places. The Voluntary Services Overseas VSO has empowered 50 youths living with disabilities with entrepreneurial skills in Sanfia District, Wapula province. The program targets youth from 18 to 35 years. We have more in the following report by Beth Cheba Katebe. The 23rd Agenda for Sustainable Development Go Number 8 has opened doors for persons with disabilities to participate and be recognized as active contributing members of society who must not face any discrimination or left behind. It is against this background that the Voluntary Services Overseas VSO has empowered differently abled youths with entrepreneurial skills. Entrepreneurship. 
Charles Kapia is Zanfia District VSO coordinator. So, I want a percentage here of Antoavalema, Avachi benefit, Kuri project, not what Avalemuka Kuri fifty, Avachi participate, Mukuba Kansha, Kupitina Muma skills, Erona entrepreneurship. Fino to Lela and the Mubari Poker, Lakona empowerment, Kuriava Quetama machines, Eto Avapele, Bambiva Cap and Tama Tools Valley, Vapele, and Ava Manukita Center, Pama Cap and Tree Workshop, Octavale Bomba. Beth Shebakatebe reporting for Zanis News in Sanfia District in Wapla Province. About 30 patients have undergone kidney dialysis and related services from the installed renal dialysis in Western Province. Provincial Permanent Secretary Simomo Akapelwa says kidney patients in the province used to face huge costs as renal services were only obtained at the University Teaching Hospital in Lusaka. Mr. Akapelwa, who was represented by his deputy Richard Mulwanda, said this during the commemoration of the World Kidney Day under the theme Kidney Health for All, advancing equitable access to care and optimal medication practice held at Lewanika General Hospital today. Western Province Permanent Secretary Sumomo Akapelo has thanked government for providing the first ever kidney dialysis equipment at Luanika General Hospital since its inception in 1923 in the province. Speaking on his behalf by Deputy Permanent Secretary Richard Murwanda, Mr. Akapelo said this during the commemoration of the World Kidney Day held at Luanika General Hospital. This day marks an important milestone for Luanika General Hospital with regards to the operationalization and the official opening of the Oneka General Hospital Reno or Kidney Dialysis Unit. Let me also thank our government, led by our leadership, President of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Mr. Kainde Ichilema, and the Minister of Health for actualizing the provisions of kidney dialysis services in our province. And we, we are very grateful that the equipment is stationed here at the Wanika General Hospital. Till mid last year, these services were obtained from very far away. Every time as a hospital, you had to send patients to, to Lusaka, to the UTH. Now, the equipment is just here, right at our doorsteps. The theme for this year is kidney health for all, advancing equitable access to care and optimal medication practice. Truly, this year's theme is in conformity with our celebration today because we are also officially opening a renal unit which will continue to provide equitable access to kidney dialysis services closer to our people. Dr. Riomas Luendo is the senior resident medical doctor at Luanika Renal Unit. I would also like to thank the government of His Excellence, Mr. Akainde Kitema, through the Minister of Health, 
for making it a reality to have a kidney dialysis unit in the Western province. It's like a dream come true. We know how rural our Western province is. Our patients come from far outlying places. They reach here, we tell them, please, for the service to be given, we have to refer to the SACA. Most of these patients really wouldn't manage to sustain themselves in Osaka because of the necessary long session of kidney dialysis. But as we speak now, we have this service on our doorsteps. And Kenneth Tumbeko is the kidney failure survivor and he shared his views. I was suffering from kidney failure, but now I was here by in two, two weeks' time. But now I'm okay, I can walk, I can do anything now. I can play football, I can do whatever. Yeah, we thank the government of the day for giving this facility for Reno. This year's World Kidding Day celebration was commemorated under the theme Kidding for All, advancing equitable access to care and optimal medication practice. Darlington Kawambe reporting in Mangu District, Western Province. Thank you, Darlington. Now, Chief former Member of Parliament Lloyd Lubosha says that government will construct an ablution block at Kaniki Combined School in Ndola for the pupils who are using pit latrines. Mr. Lubosha says that government will, in 2025, Constituency Development Fund consider constructing an ablution block at Kaniki Combined School in Sakanya area to cater for the 1,700 pupils at the school. The Member of Parliament was speaking when he commissioned a one by three classroom block at the school. We have more in the following report. About 1,700 pupils have benefited from the 1 by 3 classroom block, which has been constructed with the use of Constituents Development Fund at a sum of 750,000 kwacha at Kaniki Combined School in Sakanya area. Chifubu Member of Parliament who commissioned the classroom blocks echoed government's commitment to ensure that pupils have a better learning environment in line with free education policy. Kaniki Combined School will no longer be a combined school. We want it to be separated. Kaniki Primary School alone with its own independent and separate administration. The secondary school on its own. And it has been constructed at a cost of 700 plus, 700,000 plus. And what we did was following the directive from your office district commissioner. We have done the due diligence by furnishing the one by three classroom block with desks. 2025 CDF, we will give them a consideration to build a waterborne toilet for Kaniki. Dollar District Commissioner, who was present at the event, notes that education is a priority on the government's agenda. For us as a government, we have placed a priority on education and we are targeting a holistic approach. Education is key to development. To the residents of this area, this classroom block is an answer to the challenge you have of limited learning spaces. Kaniki combined school management and pupils were excited with the gesture. To be promised, and it's yet another to be given that which was promised to you. We are one of those few schools that have been uh, blessed with the infrastructure that we are going to see. Really love to appreciate as the school um, for this newly built uh, one by three classroom block. It will really help us because um, in the past we used to sit maybe four, four or three, three on one desk, but now we enjoy learning in a conducive environment, which will really help us a lot. And also, we're just promising the government to say that we will really uh, safeguard the new built blocks jealously. Government has continued to construct and facelift schools in rural areas through the use of constituents development funds with the aim of improving people's livelihoods. <laughs> Police yesterday curtailed celebrations by vendors in Kabwe who took to the streets to celebrate when it was rumored that government gave them a go-ahead to return to their streets and sell their merchandise. The vendors, most of whom displayed vegetables, were found celebrating in the central business district when police stormed the streets to stop their operations. Shebekile Nkunika reports that both Central Province Permanent Secretary 
and Kawe Mayor confirmed that government has not allowed street vending. They celebrated when rumor went round that they had the blessings of government to return to the streets. The street vendors in Kawe Central Business District claimed that government allowed them to go and carry out their businesses. But this celebration was short-lived as police stormed the area near ShopRite to curtail their operations. Kabwe Mayor Patrick Chishala says the removal of vendors from the streets was a presidential directive which the council cannot defy. Nothing has changed so far and uh, what the president would want to see is sanity in our respective towns. And Central Province Permanent Secretary Milna Mwanakampwe says the rumors must have emanated from misinformation. People might wish to be reminded that we are still grappling with the issue of cholera. And so to allow with impunity, without any ounce of of respect for our mothers and fathers to push them back on the street is something that we cannot accept. Just to say... Shupekile and Kunika Fozanis in Kabwe. Finally, in the news, Shoma District Commissioner Gamel Asikalea has called for the creation of more sports academies to enhance talent identification in all sports disciplines across the province. Mr. Sikalea notes that investing in the development of talent is another form of empowerment that can help reduce high unemployment levels and in turn reduce poverty in communities. Wakumelo Sitali brings us this report. In recent years, athletes are no longer getting into sport for fun but as a source of income. As the government is working towards a positive transformation of the economy, the sports sector has not been ignored. Choma District Commissioner Gamela Sikalea, who officiated at the Under-15 football tournament, called for the creation of more sports academies to enhance talent identification. Zambia now need job creation through sports. If we can create as many sports academies, we are likely to employ more people there and out there in the outskirts. Those that can, we form small academies so that we can cast our net wider. That way, we are going to employ our people. The participants and team coaches are elated with this call, but also made an appeal to the government. So from 2015 up to now, so many the means of youth and sports, but to start to empower the tournament, so we have to my equipment. So I encourage you by but to continue the same spirit, not to be We have to come to on board, maybe to help a lot of teams in terms of financial. You find that the team is doing fine, but they have just in only one ball, only one jazz. They could just help us with transport and all those things, and we really thank them for organizing this kind of event. Meanwhile, Faz and team patrons have a strategy for talent identification. We have also started as a province under 15 league, which we call First Division 5. So that's a very deliberate policy to encourage the young boys and girls to play football. So if you want to develop football, you start with the young ones. What we believe in is that not all the children in Zambia can go to the universities and others. We thought some could take their career through sports. The winners of the tournament, both boys and girls, went away with various presents. Wakmelo Stali reporting for Zanis in Choma District, Southern Province. And that sporting item brings us to the end of the news. But before we go, we take a look at the headlines once again. CEEC hands over 140 vehicles to transport sector. Zambia scores positives in nuclear science in health sector. Voluntary services overseas empowers 50 Zambia youths. Plus, Choma DC calls for more sports academies. And that is all we had for you on Zanis News. Thank you so much for joining us. On behalf of the entire team, this has been Sarah Mitty. Goodbye.